Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look At Age of Empires, Age of Kings 2 HD Edition. That is totally a botched name. This is Age of Empires 2, but it also includes all of the uh, expansion packs. This is originally a game that came out in the late 1990s and anyone who is around my age or, or had a sibling around my age is probably going to be very familiar with this as one of the like big real-time strategy games before StarCraft came out and became the only really big real-time strategy game. If that makes any sense. I guess there's stuff like Age of Empires 3 and Rise of Nations and Age of Mythology. But in any case, this is a game that I played a ton of as a kid along with, you know, games like Command & Conquer Red Alert and stuff like that. Uh, I'm garbage at it now, but it is getting a re-release on Steam. So this is going to be 20 bucks when it actually comes out, which is a little expensive. I want to kind of set the tone here or set the expectations because I think when they said Age of Empires 2 HD Edition was coming out, a lot of people thought it was going to be like a reskin and everything was going to look as good as, you know, Age of Empires 3 does. It doesn't. It's basically just up -res, so, you know, things are smaller because the screen is bigger, if that makes sense. That's not necessarily a deal-breaker, but it is, you know, I think a lot of people are going to feel, maybe not betrayed, but perhaps misled uh, by the HD in the title. This still looks exactly the same as it did before, but it's got a little bit of old-school charm to it regardless. Now, uh, this is going to be a single-player only Let's Look At, but Omrecker and I are going to play uh, some multiplayer in the future anyway. So, let's get started here. On the single player front, there are a couple of things that are worth noting here. There are campaigns, uh, the Age of Kings campaign, the Conquerors campaigns. Both of these are uh, like full featured campaigns, each of which is going to take you a long time to complete if that is what you are into. I'm not actually going to check these out myself uh, because I'm not really that into that side of the real time strategy games. But uh, I have played a little bit of the William Wallace campaign here, which is basically the tutorial. I've played up to the Battle of Sterling, which is like an hour. Uh, and I've done a little bit of the Joan of Arc tutorial as well, but not too, too much. The problem is uh, a lot of these have kind of like escort mission elements and the AI is a little bit wonky in the sense that you have to kind of babysit it a little bit. Uh, but you know, the campaign is, is fine, it's fully featured, and there is an awful lot of it. I'm not sure if some of this was uh, expansion pack content that originally came out, but what I am going to do in this video is just run a standard game against the enemy so we can get kind of a feel for what's going on with Age of Empires 2. Now, keep in mind, I'm absolute dog shit when it comes to real-time strategy game, so I'm fully expecting that this is going to be absolute garbage and I'm probably going to lose, but we're going to try to take out the computer, so let's just take a look here. I'm going to play one versus one against the computer. Uh, as you can see, there are a ton of civilizations here, you know, ranging from classics like the Britons, uh, the Franks, Vikings, etc, etc, down to perhaps more niche civilizations, not to be insulting, but you know, things like the Goths and the um, even the Koreans to an extent, the Saracens. Uh, let's just take a... I was gonna say random, but why don't we go with the, uh, Chinese. Every, uh, every civilization has its own unique tech tree as well, as you can see right here. Or at the very least, they, as you get further and further along, they have different, um, kind of at least skins for units, and they have different kind of, uh, uh effects and attributes associated with them as well. But anyway, let's, uh, close this out. And, uh, we'll set the computer to play. Why don't we do, uh, standard, you know, Chinese against... Mongols and uh, random map, map style standard seems okay with me. Real world would be interesting. Uh, tiny two player difficulty standard. I'll probably lose against standard because uh, I've done it before, but we'll see what happens here as we start the game. So this is basically just your standard kind of RTS 1v1. So uh, I'm going to do my best to explain what the fuck is going on here. Basically, of course, as you might expect, we have a bunch of villagers here. We're going to send those villagers uh, to kind of go for that lumber. The frame rate is terrible. That is a result of frabs. That is not a result of uh, the game itself. I guess this is kind of a little bit unoptimized to be running with frabs. But at the same time, if you're looking at these sprites and you're complaining about the frame rate, uh, I feel bad for you, son. I got 40 frames per second, but Age of Empires, well, I guess actually has all of them. In any case, we're going to just take our scouting cavalry and kind of move outwards here, and I'm going to build some villagers. There's a number of resources. Oh, we don't have enough food yet. Okay, so we've got to kill this first. Uh, there's a number of resources we have to worry about, namely food, gold, wood, and stone. But first things first, we're going to try to find the enemy base. Again, I cannot stress enough, I am absolute garbage. Oh, God. I hit my Windows key. I hope that doesn't ruin this. Sometimes it messes with the music, but, uh... What was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I'm absolute garbage at RTS, but I, you know, I've heard people talk about StarCraft enough to know that finding an enemy base is extremely important. So we're going to have uh, our villagers primarily focus on uh, getting food and lumber for now, but we are going to need stone as well. There's actually a very useful button in this game, uh, the idle villager button, and what that will do is that will find uh, any villager that is not doing anything. There's probably a much more elegant way of doing it, you know, now that we live in 2013, but, uh, you know, for me... 
who sucks at micromanaging and basically focuses entirely on macro. This is a goddamn godsend. So as you can see, my APM is basically through the roof, and I am gonna F all over their Ds and maybe S on their As if they're not careful. We're just gonna focus on building a uh, nice suite of villagers here. I'm gonna continue- Oh, don't go into the water, man! It's not worth it. We're gonna see uh, what clock position our enemy is gonna be spawning in here so we know where to send our army in the future. Now, there's a couple different ways to win uh, Age of Empires. Two, at least. Uh, the one way you can win is by... Let me just check my idle villager button here. Uh, and we'll go hunt some more sheep. The, usually there's like foraging bushes, which would allow me to possibly... Oh, there's the relic right there. One way to win is by destroying the enemy town center, which is basically like the command center. Another way to win is by capturing all those relics, bringing them to a monastery, uh, and holding them for 200 years, which is actually pretty quick in-game time. Uh, we're gonna really suffer pretty soon when it comes to food, though. Uh, we're not gaining a whole lot. Eventually, these sheep are just gonna, you know, stop putting out for us. Uh, there's some gold over here, which makes me think that there might be, you know, the chance of there being an enemy encampment. But in the meantime, do we have any idle villagers? We do not. Uh, I should probably produce some, then. Not produce idle villagers, necessarily. But we should also have, uh, our cavalry perhaps do some exploration and try to find some more food. Because, again, normally there's bushes that you can kind of forage from. I think what I can do is uh, actually get this guy. Sometimes you can send buffalo like back. I guess it's only a uh, uh, domesticated animals. Oh my god! Are you telling me my scout cavalry is gonna die against this boar? That was embarrassing. So we have no idea where the enemy base is. Uh, that's real unfortunate. Let's just have uh, this villager do some exploration. This is far from an ideal way to do things. Actually, what we should do is have our villager build a house. Which will give us increased population. I haven't really talked too much about the interface because I'm going to get all scatterbrained as I talk about the game and play the game at the same time. Uh, but basically, if we're going from top left here, wood, food, gold, stone, population. Population is how many units we can have. Uh, in order to get more, we have to build houses. Seems pretty simple. Uh, so I'm just going to continue building some more units here. And uh, we're going to run out of food pretty darn soon and that's not going to be great. Uh, I should probably build a barracks as soon as possible, because what I am going to try to do is bum rush the enemy a little bit. Maybe get like a nice little Zerg-esque rush in, so I build a barracks and we can build some infantry and uh, at least find the enemy. Because as is right now, I'm not necessarily in a great position. Let's also- oh, I can't build any more military build oh, I can. Um, we don't need to build two barracks, I would say, but we can build, uh, perhaps a lumber mill if I go over here. What this lumber camp will do is basically allow, uh, a quicker accumulation of resources. Again, there's probably an ideal build order uh, when it comes to Age of Empires. I don't know what it is. Now, these villagers suddenly are basically devoid of food. Let's have a couple of them, or almost all of them actually, mine for lumber here. Well, you know, not mine, but uh, look for lumber. And, uh, oh, in the meantime, I've found some foraging bushes. Great. So let's send uh, these guys over here to forage there. And we should build a mill over there as well. Again, what building a mill does is allow them to not have to bring the food all the way back to the town center. Instead, they just bring it to the mill. There's other benefits that we can get from that as well. We're very much in the early phases of the game, though. Eventually, we'll start building farms, creating a more sustainable economy. Uh, but for the meantime, let's just start producing some more villagers. So let's talk about my thoughts on the game so far, because I have sunk about uh, two to three hours in this, and I played it a lot as a kid. But, you know, if you watch a lot of these videos, you should know that I don't really consider myself a huge proponent of buying games just for nostalgia's sake. You know, when I played Tony Ox Pro Skate, HD, I was like, this game's garbage and you probably should not buy it, despite the, uh, you know, positive uh, feelings you might have about the game from when you played it as a kid. Good, we have no idle villagers, that's what I like to see. Uh, that being said, this game, it, it has some charm beyond just nostalgia. I mean, a lot of people are pissed off with Age of Empires 3 and Age of Empires Online because they kind of deviated from the formula that made Age of Empires 2 so great. This is a really well-produced game and it actually still holds up fairly well to this day. You know, graphically, it, it looks a little dated. The animations are good, though. Uh, do I see an enemy down there? I thought I saw an enemy down there. Uh, but yeah, the animations look good, and you know what? The game is just designed well. The tutorials work well. It's not, uh, you know, under or over tutorialized. It's actually, it's pretty much perfect with the level of tutorialization, which is necessary, I feel, for a real-time strategy game. There's also a shit ton of content on a campaign level here, or a campaign scale, I should say. And beyond that, there's a kind of a staggering amount of, uh, first off, let's just build some units here. Uh, but there is a staggering amount of possible replayability here, because I assume it's gonna, at least for a while, uh, have kind of a bustling multiplayer community. And I guess the main draw for this game is going to be really like ease of use multiplayer. Because I believe the original game, you might have had to actually like input 
the IP address of the person you were playing against, which, I mean, we're going back to like 1999 here, 1998 even maybe. Um, you know, that, that's what you had to do sometimes back then. And that's, you know, playing on 56k largely. So, you know, a streamlined multiplayer experience is definitely going to be uh, one of the major driving factors beyond, uh, behind making this game pl uh, very playable and perhaps popular in this day and age. Of course, nostalgia is going to factor into it as well. Uh, for better or worse, I don't necessarily think it's a terrible thing. Who's this guy? Lumberjack. All right, we're going to just hang on for a second, Mr. Lumberjack. Uh, I'm going to have you build a... If I could build more military buildings, I'd be... Nope. If I could build more military buildings, I'd be psyched, but I can't really, so I guess I'm just going to have you build a uh, farm over here, close to this mill, and we'll have you start producing some more sustainable food. The next uh, thing we want to do is move on to the feudal age, which costs 200 food, 500 food, are you crazy? And two dark age buildings, which we do have. Um, so we need 500 food, which means we should probably focus on producing some more villagers here, and also some more houses. Uh, but in any case, yeah, the, the only sore spot that I have about this game is that I think 20 bucks is kind of a steep asking price uh, for a game that is essentially, you know, we're going on like 14, 15 years old here, and it's not really HD remix, it's not like, you know, Beyond Good and Evil or something like that where, you know, it's been completely reskinned, it's just been up -res. And I'm not saying that this is a lazy on the part of the developers, all I'm saying is it is a little bit misleading. That being said, uh, you know, 20 bucks for the ability to take a trip down memory lane and play with your friends and actually play a really good real-time strategy game and a real-time strategy game that has a, a genuine respect for history. Like, this game has history lessons basically built into the game. Some of you are going to think that's dorky as hell. Some of you are going to think that's awesome. If you're the kind of person who thinks that's awesome, you can come to my birthday party anytime you want. I'm just going to build some more houses here. I promise you at some point we will get into some combat. In the meantime, I'm going to send uh, one of my infantry to try to figure out where the F the enemy is. Uh, it's gonna be worse than having a scout cavalry, unfortunately, but at the same time, uh, probably borderline necessary if we're ever gonna come across the enemy. Otherwise, I'll just have uh, my other dudes. We might wanna change our gathering point and actually have them gather over here, because I think I'm at a uh, dead end of sorts. So yeah, we'll have them gather over there. Uh, I'll start keybinding these guys, and we'll do some sick-ass micro soon. Don't you worry, uh, I'm just gonna map this guy to one on the keyboard, and then we'll do some more exploration. I really can't stress enough that there's no po- Oh, don't kill me, wolf! I really can't stress enough that I am absolutely god-awful when it comes to real-time strategy games. Uh, truly horrible. Don't fucking die to this boar. I will never- Forgive you. Okay, so we're still alive here. Um, I'm god-awful at real-time strategy games. If you're trying to tell me, like, all these strategies that you're thinking of, uh, you're wasting your breath a little bit. We definitely don't want this lumberjack over here. We want him to be probably, uh, producing food at this point. Because that is what we're gonna need to get to the feudal age, and in the feudal age we'll get, uh, better items. Or sorry, I should say better units, I suppose. Uh, we should also build up a, a relatively strong military at some point. AI is a little funky, uh, sometimes they're really smart, and other times they're incredibly dumb. Like in a one versus one, uh, you know, Age of Empires style throwdown here. Sometimes the AI will talk to me and be like, hey, you want to be neutral? And I'm like, I kind of want to be, because you're probably going to kick my ass, but I don't really see what the point is, uh, considering we're going to have to duke it out, or just, I guess, get the relics. Uh, food's going pretty well so far, so the next thing we'll do is just upgrade to the, uh, the Feudal Age. Generally speaking, I think if we can outclass the- oh, don't kill me, Wolf. God damn it, we're probably gonna die here. We have 19 of 40 health left. Maybe if we get the first attack on the wolf, we'll be able to survive. Warning, you are being attacked by wild animals, and your dude is a big puss who's probably gonna die. Oh my god, he killed it with one health left. I, I really only need this guy to be a scout. If he could just find the enemy, I would be real psyched. Uh, we're almost- Oh, there's the enemy cavalry. You know what? He's already discovered us. We'll just kind of harass him a little bit and then let him- Hey! Hey! Don't attack my dudes, you jerkwad. Scout cavalry is really, really weak, so... Uh, if he chooses to try to attack some of my workers, he's gonna find himself in a bad situation. As we all know, I pay my workers! So I'm just gonna make sure that he gets the F out of here. Make sure I'm keeping him boxed out a little bit. Alright. So, I, I have a feeling that he's down here in, like, what I would consider to be the 3 o'clock position. But again, I'm not a world-famous... Esports commentator, so what do I know? Please tell me these deer aren't going to attack me. Deer are docile creatures, man! I see some fish. Uh, this guy's very nearly dead. 
Okay, so we are ready to go to the Feudal Age here. I definitely should have clicked that earlier, but again, I am absolutely god-awful when it comes to anything involving real-time strategy. Do we have idle workers? This is a question I should ask myself more often. We do. You should go uh, mine some gold, potentially. What are you doing, man? Seriously? Why are you being such a dick? I'm gonna continue looking for the enemy encampment over here. If I don't have to use the navy, I would consider myself uh, incredibly lucky. Oh, there's a sheep here. Okay, so we can actually send that sheep back to our base. And uh, in doing so, they, this will become food for us uh, and our workers later. But anyway, we're, we're approaching the feudal age here, at which point we can upgrade our infantry. And if we could ever find the enemy base, perhaps consider uh, taking a crack. Let's just send this guy down here. Yes, we did not discover it, over, discover it over here. We discovered a relic, though. Uh, but yeah, perhaps take a crack at Zerg rushing the enemy, although it would be fantastic if I could just, you know, come across the enemy at some point as well. In the meantime, though, we'll continue just waiting here. Do we have- uh, we have, uh, five idle villagers?! Are you kidding? Oh, it's because the foraging bush is just finished. Okay. Let's have, uh, one of these guys go for this sheep. One of these guys go for this other sheep. And then we'll have, uh... Several of the other ones start building some farms because we were de desperately going to need food if we're going to rush through some enemies, uh, like so. Uh, we should probably have one build a guard tower, uh, which means we should start mining stone because guard towers require stone, but I haven't seen any stone around us. Uh, so what I might do with this guy is just have him build a house first. So that, that reskin of all our buildings just means that we have entered the feudal age here, so we can start producing some more badass units. We can upgrade all of our existing guys to men at arms. Uh, it's gonna cost us 90 food, 36 gold. That is fair, considering the sweet upgrades that these guys are gonna get to basically all of their stats. Oh, we've discovered the enemy! And I totally missed it. Hey, walk backwards, dude! You already found it! Unless these guys have set up a second base here. That is a mill. Uh, that is a house. So I'm just gonna see what these guys are doing with respect to their base right now, and then we can start perhaps bum-rushing them a little bit. Uh, although I'm probably gonna need to get some more workers out here first. Because if we can get some more workers out here, uh, then we can obviously improve our infrastructure, and as soon as we improve our infrastructure, uh, if, if our economy starts beating the enemy, we might find ourselves in a better position. These guys already have like seven farms, three houses, a mill, uh, what else as we move along here? I can't tell if they're better or worse than I am. We look pretty comparable, like, I can't feel too bad about things. So if I start just spamming, uh, units, maybe I'll be in a better position. Let's have this guy get some wood. Ha <laughs> ha I get it! Uh, do we have any more idle workers? We do not- now we do, okay. So again, I'm gonna send her to focus on- you know what, she should probably focus on gold. But before we do that, let's have her build a mining camp over by this gold so that these guys don't have to walk so far every single time. Now let's start producing some units. So we're gonna just alternate here between spearman and infantry. And again, let's set our gather point here. Never fear if we're getting to like the 20 minute point of this video and you have not seen any combat yet. One day soon, you'll have your wish. Uh, let us build another farm over here. Because I noticed that they had more farms than me in the general way that I... Uh, figure out if I'm doing a good or bad job is by looking at the computer and seeing. Now, it's unlikely we're going to be able to defeat the enemy town center, which is one way of winning the game, uh, simply by using and spamming infantry because that will shoot arrows at us. But one thing I, uh, worth noting here is that they have not entered the feudal age here. Actually, I think they just did it literally a second ago. Uh, if I come back and look at these units, maybe they will be reskinned. Yeah, they are. So I, I'm a little bit ahead of him from a technology standpoint, and we can try to press that with, a, you know, like an economical advantage as well if we wanted to. Uh, but that's not super necessary right now, because I am mostly just trying to get this video finished as soon as possible. Not because I want to, you know, say goodbye to you guys. Uh, we have more idle villagers, so I'm gonna have them build farms. No, that's not a farm, that is a watchtower, which is also interesting, but, um... What the heck was I gonna say? Yeah, not because I want to, you know, say fuck you guys, we're gonna have a short video today, but because otherwise it's gonna be like, you know, possibly as long as an hour long, and I don't have that much to say about Age of Empires 2. HD remake. I'm just kind of playing a show match here so you guys can see how fun it is and uh, mostly to kind of get some video content out for this game so people will be like, whoa, I thought this was gonna be, you know, full 1080p. I thought I was gonna be able to see like dude's hearts exploding when I stabbed him through the chest with a halberd. Sadly, no such luck. That being said, uh, it's still a, a worthwhile game in my opinion. At least if you have some nostalgia for it and you want to, you have friends you want to play against. Because you know the single player campaign, it's robust and that's really cool, again, if you want to take a trip down memory lane, but uh, at the same time, does that warrant 
Uh, the $20 asking price, which I feel is a little bit cost prohibitive. That's, you know, it comes down to a personal question, I guess, at some point. Uh, what I am going to do is set a gathering point. Now, each one of these buildings that we have also gives us the ability uh, to get perks for our units, basically. So how much is this going to cost? Re infantry have plus two line of sight. That'll cost us 67 food. I want to make the best infantry I possibly can, so let's do that. Uh, and again, we will kind of just continue spamming units after this. Do we have idle villagers? We do. These farms will eventually... Uh, it's kind of like Skulls of the Shogun, I guess. The rice paddies will eventually go dry, and we'll have to... Uh, rebuild them essentially which costs us a little bit of wood but that's okay I got plenty of wood to spare ladies uh, do we still have our dude being alive down here again I'm a terrible scout when it comes to uh, real-time strategy games not only am I playing this of course I'm also talking at the same time so my, my attention is divided shall we say what is this house uh, so we've got several houses they've got a decent number of farms no question about that they actually have a, a really good economy set up here I think uh, they do have a, another house there we are fighting the Mongols, so I'm assuming that their uh, special unit in true kind of RTS fashion, and I guess true historical fashion, uh, is going to be some kind of horse archer. So again, just going to start spamming some units out here, and when these guys are done, maybe I will start taking a crack at uh, killing some enemies. Let's actually take one of these dudes who's mining gold, and why don't we have him produce like uh, an archery range? And uh, after he finishes that, we'll start spamming some archers, and uh, we'll also build a stable and perhaps produce some cavalry as well. We're not quite at the level of siege weapons yet. Can I upgrade to the next age yet? What do I need? 800 food, 200 gold. I, 200 gold is not going to be a problem. 800 food might be a bit of an issue. Let's just produce a couple more villagers. Uh, because in doing so, we will then be able to, again, increase our economy. And I think they're really outpacing me on an economical level. Which is going to make things rough for me. What I really want to... I want to see like an Age of Empires 2 esports scene rise up with the release of this game. I want to fucking turn on Twitch TV or Team Liquid or something and be like, Oh, there's like, you know, 2,000 people watching someone stream Age of Empires HD. Actually, that shit is going to happen. At least when the game originally comes out or officially comes out. Which is going to be a little bit later this April. Uh, let's again start producing some archers here. I need to build more houses. Don't tell me what to do. You're not even my real mom. We're gonna go get a house and just put it down here. Again, I have no strategy when it comes to base building. Game tells me to do something, I do it, man. We are now gonna put down some more farms, again, because we are pretty much just stressing food uh, as our most important resource here. Um, this guy is obviously in a bad position. Uh, we can actually set our mill to automatically reseed these farms. We're getting low on wood now, so if we have an idle villager at some point, uh, which we do, we should probably send him to go cut wood over here. It's important to keep your resources in balance while also focusing on the ones that you need. Where's our, is this our archery range? It is. Uh, while also focusing on the ones that you need in order to, uh, progress, of course. Uh, once these, we don't have enough wood to produce archers, sadly. But once these guys are done, maybe we'll take a, a, a quick jaunt over to the enemy base and see if we can kill them. I doubt that it's, oh, I haven't set a gathering point. I doubt that it's gonna work out too well for us, but if we can, like, destroy their infrastructure, I would be a happy camper. Kill them from the inside out, basically. Kill them with kindness. The Steve Brule way. Okay, guys, what do you think in here? A single cavalry? That's not gonna be enough. That's a good sign, though. Unless it's a terrible sign, because they're getting ready to, uh, start sending, uh, like, a real squad to kill us. Uh, our wood situation is a little bit better. Let's create another couple of these dudes. My main problem in real-time strategy games is that I'm a big pussy and I uh, almost never take the initiative to attack. I usually just build up my defenses and try to like make my economy the best that it could possibly be. Again, because I'm a total dork. Let's set our mill to automatically reseed some farms while we're gone because I, again, shit at micro. Um, and we should have one of our villagers here build another house. And then we'll basically be good to go at that point, I feel. Do we have more units coming? Let's just take this squad and go. We'll see if we can get some combat going. Again, uh, generally speaking, unless you have kind of siege weapons, like a catapult or a ballista or something like that, it's going to be very difficult for you to kind of succeed in this uh, kind of endeavor we're doing right here. But again, if we can harass them, destroy their infrastructure a little bit, uh, we'll be in a much better position. We should have an idle worker now. And why don't we send him to build another house? Which only costs 30 wood. Things are getting real crowded up in uh, Detroit Dock City here. I don't know where we are. I guess we could be in like northern... There's southern Mongolia or northern Mongolia right now. Maybe that's it. We're like the uh, the Han Dynasty 
Not the Han Solo dynasty, but we're trying to. I don't know why I'm creating this alternate fiction. There's actually like a real history for this. Now, the problem is my dudes are going to get absolutely filleted by any kind of uh, defensive building. So if there's an outpost anywhere, uh, that's going to be real rough for us. But let's try to destroy the enemy barracks here. I guess we'll start by destroying, you know, what the enemy barracks has produced, and then we'll go after the uh, enemy workers. This guy should die real quickly. Uh, then we'll handle the barracks, and we'll just, in the meantime, continue microwing what we've got going on back here. This guy is uh, not doing anything. Let's have him build a stable, perhaps. Oh, not enough wood. Okay, you know what? Why don't we have a, you mine for a while? And we'll just try to destroy the enemy barracks. As you can see, I mean, the buildings are holding up fairly well. This is going to continue to be the case until we can actually afford to get a uh, siege weapon up and running. So what I should do is probably upgrade to the next age. What do we need? 800 food, 200 gold, two feudal age buildings. I don't know. Maybe I don't have two feudal age buildings. In which case, uh, as I micro here... <laughs> and again, I'm using the term micro loosely because obviously I'm not really doing a great job of it. Uh, this thing should be dead any second now. Good. That's actually very good. Better than I expected. I don't know why this thing's on fire. I had nothing to do with that. Maybe it got attacked by a pack of wild boars or something. Uh, and again, just continue destroying the enemy infrastructure. If we can kill some workers or villagers, I'm going to be a happy camper. But in the meantime, let's also focus on killing some buildings. Okay, do we have an idle villager? No. You are now going to be an idle villager, and I'm going to have you build a, um, a stable, which is going to be a feudal age building, which should then allow us... Okay, now we got to kill these workers. Again, every single one of these guys that we kill is going to impact the enemy economy in a very strong way. You probably don't need me to explain the very basics of, uh, you know, real-time strategy game economies to you. This is just going better than I expected, so I'm getting a little cocky, I suppose. Uh, once this building dies, I guess we'll start focusing on some houses. Pardon me. And also the workers, uh, so that they can't produce any more... This is the first time I've ever had ranged units this early, because normally I suck at the game. Uh... I am being attacked, though. I'm just looking on my map to see where it is. I guess maybe the workers are, are rebelling and fighting back. wonder if I can kill this guy before he runs away. Yes, okay. So we're just going to back up for a little bit. And I'm going to hang out on the outside here. Because I know I've destroyed his economy. At least uh, a good part of it. Why don't you start farming again and we should be able to go up to the next age. Fantastic. Okay, now we'll focus on our army again. I think they have a couple of... Is that, are they, I can't tell if these are archers or just like regular dudes. Who are probably pretty pissed off about this whole situation right here. Um, you know, he's gonna live. So let's start destroying these uh, enemy houses. Again, once we destroy the houses, they should have uh, basically no way... Oh, that's the problem again. The fucking town center is gonna shoot uh, arrows at us. So I'm just gonna kind of continue being on the outskirts here. Outside of the range of enemy attack. After we build a couple of more buildings, we should be able to... Uh, Start building some siege engines, so if I can just keep the enemy kind of screwed for now, for lack of a better word. Um, like, keep them inside of their own area here and maybe kind of like harass these workers a little bit. Uh, then I should be okay to start building siege engines. And when I start building siege engines, then things are going to be really rough uh, on the enemy. I'm just wondering if I can still be shot here. I think I can, but I also think I can destroy the uh, house while only losing one or two dudes. Which might be fine, because that means they are going to produce, like, five less dudes. Or going to have the ability to produce five less dudes. I'm losing more units than I expected here. This house has got to be super close to being killed, though. It is very close. Uh, maybe I should just harass the workers. Again, there's probably, like, a standard RTS protocol for this that I just don't know. And that's really unfortunate. We are about to enter the castle age here. I would say that I'm doing pretty strongly so far. And we're mostly just trying not to get too close to the enemy. As long as I can continue to harass these workers and eventually produce some siege weapons. Oh, there's another barracks here. That's what we should be looking out for. The, the, not only the barracks, but also, uh, you know, harassing the shit out of these workers as well. Okay, so we're going to enter the castle uh, age very shortly. Let's go check out our idle workers. You should definitely rebuild your farm. Uh, let's just focus on our dudes down here to make sure they're doing the right thing. You guys should not be standing there just taking damage for no reason. Uh, okay. There we go. And if we can continue to, you know, get them rebuilding this shit instead of building new shit, that's awesome for us. You should also rebuild your farm. Like so. Uh, do we have any other idle workers? We do not. So this guy is now going to become an idle worker. Uh, and I'm going to use you to build a military building. And it'll be a stable. Oh, we've already built a stable. Um, an advanced building? How do we get siege engines? Maybe that's even the next level. We probably need uh, a blacksmith first, that's for sure. 
So again, I, I, I don't totally understand the tech tree progression in Age of Empires. Uh, Age of Empires 2, I should say. HD or otherwise. This thing should be dead very, very shortly, and we continue to harass the enemy and just generally uh, make ourselves big dicks about everything. I should probably produce a, a, a larger army. We have the resources for it right now. But I'm also trying to save up for some, uh, you know, more advanced machinery. So let's just kind of make our way around the bottom here. Again, not getting too close to the town center, just kind of annoying the shit out of the enemy. And making sure that I can't be hit by the town center, because if, if I just attack the town center directly, things are going to start to go badly very, very quickly. Uh, so I think I have probably by this point finished producing that building. You should definitely rebuild your farm. We should just set the mill to automatically reseed these. It's a pain in the ass though. I could use the mill to, uh, upgrade our ability to, or upgrade our farm's abilities. Don't get too close, you ding-dongs! The town center is gonna shoot at you. Yeah, just kill this guy instead. Jerk was trying to cut some wood. This is my forest! I could actually just have the archers attack. I just want to see if the town center can hit me from here. They definitely can if I spread out. Which is what I'm worried about. Uh, but they don't- oh, yeah they are. Okay. So let's just back up a little bit. I'm being attacked by Vikings? Oh no. You are being attacked by Kitboga. Must have missed that one. Um, we should have idle workers again. Now can I build a- Yes I can, okay. So if, now that we're building a siege workshop, Oh, I need more wood. What do we need? 200? Yeah, that's my guess. Let's just wait a second here. Uh, once I get the siege workshop up and running... I did not even see this up here. Good AI, guys! Much appreciated. Uh, but now that we have 200 wood... Let's go to Idle Worker. We should be able to build a siege workshop. And this will allow us to produce some dope-ass catapults, which will allow us, once we get three or four of them, to possibly just steamroll the enemy while we're still in the castle age here. We're also getting a ton of food, so you know what, it's probably in my best interest to do a couple of things here. One of them is going to be produce a couple more workers. Should probably worry about idle workers as well. We should produce um, some more skirmishers and stuff like that. Assuming we have the population. Oh, you know, we're out of wood, actually. Um, do we have idle workers? We don't. We should have one of these gold dudes. Uh, maybe even two of them, but let's just go with one for now. Uh, start chopping wood. Even if we don't care if the money's no good. Uh, we do have an enemy cavalry here, but a single cavalry uh, doesn't really bother me all that much. Okay, so this villager is going to go chop some wood. Uh, this villager is also going to go chop some wood. What's going on down here? Enemy stable is going to be destroyed pretty quick. Uh, enemy villager, also going to die in probably two seconds. It's kind of a massacre so far, but I'm known in these strategy games, at least, you know, known to myself in these strategy games, for not being able to finish things off. Which is what I'm uh, worried about here. So we're going to start producing some catapults. We need more wood, though. Uh, I think. Yeah, we're, we're going to need a lot more wood, actually. Each one of these is going to cost us kind of a staggering amount uh, of wood. So in the meantime, we're just going to continue to use our army, which has been very good for us, uh, to harass the enemy and make sure that any buildings they produce are just a waste of resources. Uh, and any villagers they send out are getting killed. Now, they do have a really good food supply. There's probably a way to raise uh, enemy properties and stuff like that. But I don't know what it is. So in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of do the most limited amount of micro I possibly can. And handle things on the one side here. But, uh, do we have idle villagers? We do have some uh, new units. We don't have any idle villagers. And our wood production is real slow. Uh, can you please gather here? We have created a siege unit now. And it, is that it right there? Where? Oh, it's over here. Okay. So I'm going to set it to gather over there. I should probably move the gathering point for the other buildings as well. Like maybe you start gathering over here. And the barracks start gathering over here as well. Uh, that's already pretty good. Uh, and again, we'll just keep microing these guys. At least, you know, pseudo microing these guys to uh, make sure that the enemy is not having a good chance to get anywhere. With the increased wood that we have now, let us now produce some more siege engines. Maybe this one right here. I, I don't really look all that much into the tech tree. Again, I'm sure this is something uh, that makes a huge difference if you're actually playing it seriously. But in my very, very medium, or I should say mild or mediocre level is perhaps the best way to put it. Uh, it's not really all that necessary right now. So there is our scorpion. Come over here, please. Is our other thing produced? Not quite. We're just going to continue producing some other stuff here. And I should also, uh, you know, spam out some archers. Maybe even some cavalry, because I'm being not very good about that right now. Uh, and so why not some uh, infantry as well? Men-at-arms, anyway. 
Again, we're very low on wood here. And uh, after we kill this building and we get some more units, maybe we will go for the final blow at the uh, Mongolian Empire here. They're not really seeming to expand all that much. Anytime they kill, they make a building, I uh, kill it pretty much instantly. Now, it's totally possible that my uh, siege will fail here. And by totally possible, I mean perhaps even likely. But our siege weapons will make it uh, substantially easier for us to uh, beat the enemy. We don't have enough wood. How many more of these dudes are being produced? Not too many. How many more archers are being produced? Only one. Okay, so we're going to have a, a decent size uh, squad here to make some good stuff happen. Is this a house? Mining camp. All right, that doesn't probably need to be destroyed, but we might as well do it. Uh, and we're just going to set these guys to uh, two once this guy gets over here. So these are, this is going to be my second kind of regiment here. Uh, and let's send them down here. And we'll just wait for them to get here. In the meantime, let's just, again, continue to destroy some random buildings here. We're probably going to strike right at the heart of the enemy and go straight for that town center. Uh, if our siege engines manage to survive and they don't get uh, focused down first, then we should find ourselves in an okay position. We're definitely, like, ravaging their villagers here. Even if they are producing more villagers than I can kill, uh, we're annoying the shit out of them at the very least. I mean, the only thing they're really producing all that well right now seems to be food. Uh, and, you know... Even if they are producing food, that doesn't necessarily bode well for them producing an army later. Ah, uh, they do have some cavalry, though. If that's scout cavalry, it'll die very quickly. They have a lot of workers over here, which kind of worries me. But also excites me, because we have a chance to do some real damage to them now. So let's, again, just kind of take out their infrastructure here. In fact, they have some kind of, like, yeah, lumber camp over here. Hell, lumber camp, fucked her. Uh, AI during moving, you know, it doesn't necessarily always path the right way. Which is real annoying. Uh, but, you know, it, it handles pretty well considering this is AI for a game that was, again, built, you know, 20 years ago or so. So, that, uh, worker should be dead very, very shortly. Two damage, or two health left, okay. Now, where is our... Again, because they, they kind of get caught up in it, if that makes sense. They, they don't necessarily focus on what you want them to focus on. So, okay, we're going to town on the town center now. Uh, let's send our archers and other infantry to attack it, because our siege engines are also coming in over the top here. I don't know if we'll be able to succeed here. Either way, I'll probably end the video here, is my guess. Uh, largely because, I, again, I don't necessarily want to continue this ad infinitum. Not that this would go on forever, but, you know, it would go on for a long time. Whoa! Did we win? He resigned! Alright, we're too good! I should have had more faith in myself. In any case, that was a, a pretty convincing victory, which I didn't necessarily expect. Uh, this is just my, you know, kind of vague let's look at of Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. What are you getting? Essentially, uh, Age of Empires 2 HD Edition with seemingly exactly the same graphics, just upscaled to, you know, 1080 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. That's not necessarily a bad thing. 20 bucks is a little bit cost prohibitive, I think, for some people, but at the same time, you know, same great game. I, I like it a lot more than Age of Empires Online, which was a colossal disappointment in my opinion. Uh, and the uh, ability to not only kind of tap into that nostalgia, but also have kind of easy to access and easy to use multiplayer uh, might make this a worthwhile purchase for those of you who are into real-time strategy games uh, more so than I am. Anyway, like I said, this is just a single player let's look at. I will be checking out the multiplayer as soon as possible with Ohm Wrecker, who is probably going to kick my ass because he's really good at real-time strategy games. But as always, thank you guys for watching. There will be a link to pre-order this in the video description if you are interested, so I encourage you to check that out. If you are, again... As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.